Your family's backup data could be rotting away right now. Go find those binders on a shelf, the shoeboxes in your closet or under your bed. Let's fix that. By the way, I have a companion video to this one up on Nebula, diving in on a lot more nostalgia in what I found in my family's archives. I'll tell you about that at the end of this video. The first tool we're going to use is Image Burn. This is a free tool that, among other things, lets you create a clean digital image of the entire disc that you have, be it a CD, a DVD, a Blu-ray, whatever, to have it preserved exactly as it is without manually copying the files off. I don't use this for every disc that I archive uh, of my family backups, but I am using this for my demo disc ripping project that I'm making images of every disc just in case. While pressed discs from the factory, such as what music or movies were sold on, are less susceptible to this, homemade CDRs and DVDRs are very easily damaged or destroyed. The data is written to them by melting a layer of dye on the disc itself in the etching that writes the detail to the disc, and it's very easy for chips or scratches to make it difficult or impossible to read this data, and if they are stored in a hot or humid environment, such as an attic or an unconditioned storage unit, uh, that those that die can melt or move around and all of your discs stored there could be experiencing this disc rot right now for homemade discs which you or your family may have used for photo or data backups in the 90s or early 2000s damage to both the label side and the bottom shiny side could cause issues reading from them whereas factory press discs have the data stored on the label side and so scratches on the bottom are actually much less of a concern when it comes to reading from them but if the label side is damaged it could be fatal obviously to do any of this data reading you'll need optical drives if you have a desktop tower and pc building prowess i cannot recommend the lg blu-ray internal drives enough they are just so reliable for me i have so many of them in all of my pcs at this point and many of them can ship with or be firmware patched to rip 4k blu-rays even which is pretty wild uh, usb optical drives are fine but they will be slower They'll read a little bit slower and they can sometimes be flaky about dropping out connection so you might face a little bit more frustration or have to do repeat attempts i do recommend either buying multiple different drives from different manufacturers up front or being prepared to buy different ones later on if you have discs that are causing trouble reading swapping drives around may be enough to get you to actually get the data that you need as silly as it sounds uh, switching to different drives from different manufacturers or even just different types of drives from the same manufacturer like if i'm putting a cd in my blu-ray drive and then that didn't work i popped it in my hd dvd drive that was enough to recover data from numerous damaged discs during my time spent archiving my discs so worth a shot for straight up file copying from the disc obviously you can just use your operating system's file manager i also use TerraCopy on Windows to help with file transfers. It is much more multi-threaded than Windows Explorer and handles uh, copying bulk, you know, tiny files a, a lot more quickly and a lot more reliably. It allows for specific file status tracking to check individual file copies progress, hash checking to make sure the files are the same in both places. It allows you to pause your progress and things like that. While it's not crucial, it has been quite helpful in figuring out which specific file might be causing a hang up on a disk or you know, causing a hiccup on whether or not I can get the rest of the files off the disk and maybe either skip that one because it's not worth, you know, archiving or try a different approach and just make sure I have everything else first. I specifically went through all of this the past couple years as one of my big pandemic projects towards the start of the pandemic and I was digitizing and archiving all of my family's old disk backups and preserving them for the future. I already showed my process for archiving and digitizing old 8mm and mini DV tapes and my VHS archival guide is still coming soon, yes. Uh, but I wanted to detour a bit to talk, to talk about optical discs because those are a ticking time bomb. It is worth noting that I did find some cases where I couldn't copy a specific file off the disc, but I could image the disc and then retrieve that file from the image that way, uh, which is why I mentioned using Image Burn first. So that way you have a clean image and then you can worry about the files. Uh, if even that is having trouble reading from the disc, you could try a program like IsoBuster to see if it could recover the disc instead. Uh, it may or may not work. Something also worth noting is that Windows's built-in antivirus will sometimes get in the way. It did for me with Windows Defender flagging a lot of different COM and EXE files from ODOS and Windows 3.1 programs uh, and, you know, tagging programs and games as possible viruses even though they weren't. They're just really old and probably confusing looking these days and then deleted them whenever I tried copying them over. Temporarily disabling it if you know the disks don't have malicious code on them is an option, though the early 2000s were fraught with malicious code and adware everywhere, so maybe not do that. 
Uh, but you could also just use, say, a Linux distro to move the files around back and forth, or use DD to make images. My option, since I was unlikely that I was trying to run any of these programs in the modern era, was to be fine with Windows Defender letting, you know, preventing me from copying whatever file, just default to the safety, and then use the imaging to image my disk. And that way, if I needed to get those specific program files later, they're still preserved regardless, but I don't have the risk of the malware ending up in my actual files. Again, unlikely to cause damage these days, but better safe than sorry sometimes. It wasn't a difficult call to decide if I needed to run my old, like, memory cheat programs for old computer games and Windows 11. I, I, I don't. For ripping music CDs, I used Exact Audio Copy. It lets you rip an uncompressed wave version of your music if you want, or lossless flack along, along with other codecs. Uh, manage metadata, and so on. I have an old video on how to do this process linked below if you're curious. For ripping photo disks, I used, uh, I both imaged the disk with ImageBurn, and then just kind of poked around the files as well as the HTML files that would load the faux web pages for them to find where the photos were stored and copied them off manually. For DVDs and video CDs, I used Make MKV. It is free with a renewing trial where you have to reinstall it every 30 days or whatever, or it's just like $30 for a one-time purchase, which I had no problem paying after using it for near at least like 10 years now <laughs> just to keep it activated. Make MKV lets you rip uncompressed copies of DVDs, Blu-rays, HD DVDs, and so on, leaving the quality and subtitles and everything completely untouched, which is my preferred, preferred way to rip. If you want to compress these to save space, you can do that secondary, you know, after you're sure the rip is fine, using something like Handbrake to do so. These discs contained so many interesting relics of the past and nostalgic memories, from childhood photos, photos of my old Hot Wheels PC setup, may it, may it rest in peace, uh, <laughs> to mostly non-functional builds of some of my earliest websites, graphics from the Pokemon ROM hacking and sprite art communities I was a part of, early camcorder videos that were terribly digitized, sometimes at 5 frames per second for some reason. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've got archives of cheat codes for various games, RuneScape private server clients, skateboarding videos when we thought we could somehow get sponsored, old game making tools. Anyone remember Beyond? It was so cool for the time. I've got old writing drafts, classic 90s and early 2000s music, AMVs stored in FLV. <sighs> We've got portable apps. Everything was a complete disorganized mess. I noticed some trends in our backup habits with these discs as well. While at some point they were stored in binders or on spindles through, through various, you know, renovations, moving stuff around and so on, they all got shoved into a single small box left to bounce around and scratch each other up and... Not, not great. Storage for discs is very important for longevity. Spindles are actually mostly okay, um, or soft disc binders with non-acidic materials gotta make sure they're not that or otherwise they will leach into the discs and ruin them. The same thing with trading cards by the way. I've also noticed that there would be waves where my parents or myself would make backup discs like every month or so for like a few months in a row and then drop off for a year or two or more. Obviously this leaves gaps in the in the files for many periods of time while completely redundant copies of others that were completely unnecessary. Setting a consistent backup schedule with reminders on your calendar or something is very important. Using discs, though Blu-rays are more viable now than CDs or DVDs, if you can even find blanks anymore, is still a valid backup process, by, by all means, it is still valid. I made a video for my process of backing up to Blu-ray discs with parity and redundancy and everything like that if you're interested, linked below. But you'll have to take care of them, back up regularly, and store them in safe conditions. Again, away from heat, humidity, or just extreme temperature fluctuations in general. File organization is also important. While a scattered mess of files might make sense to you, in, in, in the now, when you try to go find that specific photo of a family member in 10 years or something, a, 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 an unlabeled or unorganized backup disk is going to drive you insane or keep you from accessing the data you need in the future. Creating an organization structure is important, but keeping it simple and keeping it, you know, easily replicated is more important than trying to be clever about it. Even if it's just something like year, photos, documents, videos, etc. is better than something more complex and harder to navigate years down the line. Or by a future relative or descendant that wants to go through these down the line. Consistency is key. You most likely don't need monthly backups, but every six months or even just every year for your most important stuff is way better than backing up monthly for a few months at a time and then skipping a few years. There's quite a few files and archives that I was hoping to find during this process that I didn't find, and that was purely due to this inconsistent gap 
prone you know backup process that was mean that we maintained i want you to be able to avoid that lastly remember the three two one if i can do my numbers right backup rule i have another video detailing this in depth uh, but effectively have your backups in three places two redundant places and then one off-site remember that putting a bunch of files on an external hard drive and then putting that in a closet somewhere is not actually a backup if that's your only copy that's just lazy file storage put it on two hard drives and Google Drive or something like a, a hard drive that you take you know one for your home and then one that you put in another family member's home or in a safe storage unit that kind of thing if your house burns down you don't want all your data to burn down